Okay, I'd like to introduce our next speaker for the, uh, for the first presentation in our last um, group of sessions for the day. It will be um, Sakshi Srivastav, who's going to be talking about women in engineering. Please welcome her. Okay, can everyone see me? Am I visible? Okay, good, good. That, that means yes. Okay, I'll take that as yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm standing. Can you believe it? <laughs> so, my name is Sakshi Shivastav, and I. My name is Sakshi Shivastav, and uh, I'm a second year graduate student at the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign. Any Illinois people here? U of I? Hey, hi. Go, Illini. Uh, I study electrical engineering, and I am currently pursuing masters. Uh, I did my undergrad at Illinois as well, so over the last five years I have realized I really like flatlands and cornfields, so I have decided to stay in Illinois for a PhD, so that's, that's my motivation. Uh, but on a serious note, my focus is on wireless communication systems and antennas, and currently I'm studying the interference between two devices when they operate at the same frequency. But that's not what this presentation is about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. This is this this presentation today is about something I am very passionate about and something that I think there needs to be a dialogue especially among the intellectuals in our community and in the tech industry. The kind of people who are present in this room today. It's about the underrepresentation of women in engineering. So I think I pressed this button. Yes. So OSHWA's aim on their website, one of the aims is to promote accessibility of technical knowledge and collaboration for technological development. But how can we have collaboration when half of our population is not represented proportionately in the, techno te in the technological community? And that is exactly what we need to discuss and we need to mitigate because look around you. How many women do you see in this room right now, compared to the number of men you see? More than <laughs> That shouldn't be the standard. More than one <laughs> should not be the standard. So moving forward, I'm going to throw some numbers at you. And this will help us quantify how bad the situation is. So this data has been uh, uh, taken from American Society for Engineering Education. And we can see that over the last 10 years, less than 20% of all the bachelor's awardees were women. And you know what? This number is not much different for master's and doctoral degrees either. I think the master's is, as far as I remember, 25%-ish. And for doctoral, it's 23. And as you move forward in academia, it's like all faculty 15.7% of all faculty members are women. And that's, that's a pretty low number. And unfortunately, it doesn't end in academia, you know. It, it carries on to industry, which we can see here. And this data is from the Department of Labor website, by the way, where we can see that depending on the major a woman is a part of, women represent different percentages of the workforce. They could, they made 21.4% of the computer programming workforce in 2014, but only 8.8% of mechanical engineers. 8.8%. What are we talking about here today? If I try to make a team of 100 in mechanical engineers in 2014, almost only nine of them would be women. 91 of them would be men. And it doesn't end there. Studies have shown that women exit from engineering jobs at a higher rate than men, approximately at 38.8% higher rate than men. So why should we care? Why is it important for us to include more diversity in engineering? So US, USA Today ended up writing an article in, published an article in 2015 about the importance of diversity in engineering. And they, decided a bunch of studies and eventually led to the idea that more diverse teams are more productive, not more productive, more creative and better performing than their homogeneous counterparts.
and that kind of makes sense, right? If I'm trying to, from my point of view, if I'm trying to design an RF receiver, right? I need an antenna engineer to make the antenna. I need the RF engineer to make the front end. I need a DSP guy or a girl to make the ADC or C A ADC or DAC, yes. Uh, for my front end. I need circuit designers to bias my amplifiers and so on and so forth. So in order to solve any complex problem, we need specialized people who can work together. But that won't happen if we don't have a diverse group of people being represented in the workforce. So, di so diversity helps us see the problem from different points of view. At the same time, it helps us use talent in a judicious fashion. We don't want to let go talent wasted in this day and age where we have, we have we, the technology is moving forward at the speed of light, if I can say that, then we need more engineers, we need more people in tech. How can we let go any talent wasted at this point? And by including more diverse group of people in our teams, most importantly, we are creating role models more relatable role models for the future generations of minority groups. And I'll tell you why I am personally invested in this. So I come from India. I come from an all-girls convent school. I came to the US in 2011 for undergrad. And I, I entered my classroom and I see no women. And it's not a good thing. You would think it's like a fun thing. Yay, no women, just guys, going to be fun. No, no, <laughs> it wasn't. It's not. So, and that was the time I realized that, wait, something is seriously up. And I wanted to find out the reason behind it. So in my freshman year of college, I ended up writing a research paper for one of my classes on the underrepresentation of women in the STEM fields. And I found multiple reasons for it, because apparently it's a very well-researched topic, and people are trying to find the reason why there aren't so, as many women in, in engineering or in math intensive fields as men. And one of the reasons that stuck out was the issue of lack of role models and representation. The very fact that women do not see themselves represented in engineering, rather the fact that young girls don't see themselves represented in engineering, holds them back from being in the field in the first place. And that also makes sense. If I don't see myself as a successful entity in engineering, why would I want to be a part of it? I need to know that I will do well in a given field. So here's a solution to our problem. Because it's a complex problem, and there are many solutions to it. But one solution to this problem is to have more visibility of female role models and, re and more representation of women so that younger girls can be inspired to be a part of the engineering community. Developing a sense of belonging is very essential for us to retain women, because we could see that even though around 20% women are graduating, the workforce is still making 8.8%. Where is the rest going? What's happening? And, so, and even though that is for different majors, and different majors have more, more women in particular major and less women in mechanical to begin with, but still, there is definitely some women not joining the workforce. Something is going wrong. So developing that sense of belonging is very important in retaining women in the engineering field. Good thing is that we have been trying. We have been trying for the last 100 years because Nora Barney graduated in 1905. She's the first woman engineer to graduate with an engineering degree in the United States of America from Cornell University as a civil engineer. And after that, more and more work has been done to promote more women in engineering, including starting the Society of Women Engineers in 1950. In 1994, IEEE started its uh, women engineering program. And in 1997, the Anita Borg Institute for Women and Technology was started which basically I think they also work with GHC, uh, GHC, which is the Grace Hopper Conference for Celebration of Women in Computing. I, I hope I'm right about this. Uh, so that's what's happening on a country level on, and on a, on a world level. What about UFI? What are we doing? What is my alma mater doing to bring in more women? 
I'm going to talk about four different projects that are currently uh, running at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Two of them are actually uh, started, were started by students, and the other two are managed by the university. So I'm first going to talk about Mega Girl, where young girls between the age of 7 and 10 are actually introduced to technology using 3D printing. And the idea of women leaders in tech is kind of instilled in them that they can be a you know, leader in the STEM field. Similarly, Miss Possible uses dolls to do the same thing, to instill ambition. But those dolls are actually real role models, like Mary Curie, so that young girls can see that they can succeed in STEM fields. And the next two, which I said earlier, are university-run programs. So WIMSY, which is Women in Math, Science, and Engineering, is a, basically a university program where three floors of a particular residence hall is dedicated to housing women in STEM so that they have a safe space for collaborating with one another and interacting with one another. And the last one is WE, which is Women in Engineering. It is an entity within the College of Engineering, and it oversees different student-run organizations like Women in ECE, Women in CS. They also hold freshman women orientation camps and do outreach in high school to get more women in engineering. But this, there's one project that, that I have been uh, involved in, which is the Women Engineer Statue Project. So after seeing what was the issue and the, the one cause that kind of stuck in my head regarding you know, representation and lack of role model, I came up with an idea in June 2013, which was to erect a woman engineer statue and put it on the engineering pod and let the whole world know that at Illinois, we are supporting women in tech till the time they, they dream and they're ambitious about being a woman engineer and developing world-changing technology. So I took this idea to the College of Engineering, and I was told to start an online petition, which I did. So once I started the online petition, got the signatures of around over multiple hundreds of alumni and current students, took it to the student government, and finally, you can see the, yeah, and finally took it to, got endorsement from the student government and the academic government, and went back to the College of Engineering saying, OK, everyone's in support. Let's just do this. So where are we right now? Three years later, I am working with a group of students that represent, kind of represent the student body, because those students are actually leaders of various student organizations, to see what this woman should look like. What is the essence of being a woman engineer? And we come up with the defining qualities of of this woman statue that we want. And the one thing that is very important to all of us is that the statue should be racially inclusive. We want all women all around the world to know that they can be engineers. And this was a very interesting experience for me because I got to, I had, I ended up learning some very life-changing lessons. The first one was the acknowledgement of my own privilege that I was able to get a college education, which not many, many, not just women, but also men are not able to have. And the fact that I had no, I had plethora of women role models in my life. My mom is a medical doctor. My sister is an engineer. I never had issues seeing what women can do. My, even my grad advisor is a female. My first math professor was a female. So things worked out for me. But that's not the case for all women all around the world. And the second was the importance of voicing my own opinion. If you, have a, if you have a plan and you think you're passionate about what you want to do and that you will be able to change something, someone's life with it, say it. Because somebody else might feel the same way. You might be able to form a team, work together, and bring about a change. So as individuals, we all can contribute to challenge and change this underrepresentation of minorities. The first step is to encourage. Encourage young, young students from minority groups, which don't necessarily have to be women, but also racial minorities and sexual minorities, to be a part of the STEM field, to just explore what there is, what is engineering really about at a younger age. 
The second is to spread awareness. We need to educate not only the minority groups, but also the majority groups regarding the importance of diversity, that why we need more diversity and, and why it is, it is actually very helpful for our overall community as a tech community to have more diversity. And third is to share your story, because you never know when, when the story of your struggles could be inspiration for someone else. It's very important that we all share what we go through as engineers, this, not just our success story, but actually stories about our own failures. And I'm so glad that I got invited to talk to you guys today because this is like sharing my own story with you all. And earlier this year, I had the opportunity to talk at a TEDx event and I just, I go to these talks and I want to inspire people, but the truth is when I come out of those conferences, I feel more inspired than I thought I could ever be. So I also want to thank all the speakers because I think I saw probably the best prosthetic demo of my life uh, today. So thank you so much and I hope together as a community, I know this is a simple model of solving a complex problem, but together as a whole community, maybe this is a first step towards getting more women in engineering and hopefully it won't take another 100 years to get 20% more women. Thank you.